Okay, so here is the second video explaining um, the steps to analyzing ECG. So we went over this briefly. So the first thing we're going to focus on is determining the rate and the regularity. So step one is the rate. So we use the six second count method. It's the simplest and most common method. So um, and we also use the R to R method. Anything more particular than that requires a ruler and doing really discrete calculations. So the way that we do this is each rhythm strip is a six second rhythm strip. And this is how I'm going to be giving you all of your rhythm strips. Um, and what we essentially do is count the peak and we call it the R to R method because as we've discussed, this is the P wave. This dot is Q R S and this is the QRS wave. So what we're going to count is R to R as one wave. So um, the R value counts as one. This next one is two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven R markings in a six second strip. And so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply six seconds times 10 to make it 60 and that equals a minute. And then we're going to multiply our R values which are seven in this case. So it will be 70 over 60. And so this counts as a whole beat. So it'll be 70 beats per minute, as opposed to um, looking at the seven full beats per six seconds. And that's how we're going to determine how many the rate for um, the segments for the purposes of this class. OK, so here are some of the calculators um, and rollers that we use to do more discrete calculations. Okay. So determining the regularity. So when you look at this strip, this has 40 beats per minute and it is regular. And the regularity means it comes in a regular, um, when you look at it with your eyes, you can see that the beat is at a regular value and you can tell by counting the squares in between the big squares in between the um, R peaks. Well, here you can see this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight R peaks. So it's 80 beats per minute, but you can see this is irregular and you can just see this with your eyes. There are more discrete calculations that we can use um, if you worked for a cardiac doc, but um, for the purposes of this class, we are going to eyeball it and see if you can visually see that this is an irregular heartbeat, then you count it as irregular and this is regular. So you counted it as regular. So here we've determined both the rate and the regularity. So next we're going to be identifying the P waves. And this is the first little hump here. This is the activation of the atria or the atria squeezing. So the atria squeezes first, then the ventricle squeezes. And so those two, um, those two squeezes account for the beat that we hear the heart going and the, the um, words we use for that is lub dub, but the lub dub sounds are actually being made by these, um, these little areas here slamming shut. And so we'll talk more about that in a second. So here is the P wave right here. And here is the QRS wave right here. And here's the T wave. So this is a normal heartbeat. This is fast, this is slower, and this is irregular. If you can differentiate, if you can differentiate between these three and you understand what I'm talking about, we're good until now. So this is normal, this is faster than normal, this is slow, and this is irregular, if you're following me this far. Okay, so determining the PR intervals, and essentially what we are seeing is the segment between the P and the R interval are consistent. And um, the QRS complex, that is making sure that the um, ventricle squeezing is consistent. So um, determining the site of origin of the dysrhythmia, as we are putting the electrodes on the person's chest, if we're seeing um, from here to here is the person's chest, 
One of the things that we take into consideration is that each electrode has its separate um, signal. So that's why um, when you get the printout, some of the signals look a little bit different. And each electrode has its perspective of the energy that it's picking up from the heart. So the electrodes that are closer to the heart will have a stronger um, beat or a stronger um, negative and positive wave than the electrodes that are further away. So a positive deflection is up, a negative deflection is down, and biphasic is up and then down. And most heart rates go up and then down a little bit. So here we are. So identifying the dysrhythmia is what you guys are doing in week three. It's a little bit challenging, but um, once you identify the dysrhythmia, they are separated into four different categories. You can then discuss where the dysrhythmia is coming from. And so here you see a faster beat and then it's slowing. And here you see a fast beat. Um, this is faster than normal. And then here you see um, a weird thing happening here with the ventricles. So um, that is basically the lead up until the video that I give you for week three. But I wanted to describe this in a little bit more detail because I did get some questions. So perhaps I should do a video for each slideshow just to walk you through it and give you some additional information if that's something that you need. Um, you know, please give me some feedback and let me know if this is helping you out at this point.